Hello, this is Ajin Kevak Saure, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics. This is the fourth video regarding electron optics. Now, in this video, I am going to explain the concept of motion of an electron in magnetic field. In class 12, students have already studied the concept of magnetic effect of electric current. Now, consider a wire carrying a current I in the downward direction. As we know that the flow of electron is opposite to the direction of current. So, electron flow will be vertically upward as shown in the figure, yeah, animation. This current carrying wire produces the magnetic field in the surrounding region. And the direction of that magnetic field is given by using the right hand thumb rule. So, according to right hand thumb rule, the magnetic field lines in this case will be circular and the magnetic field will be clockwise as shown in the animation. Now consider the two points P and Q. At point P, the direction of magnetic field is out of the plane. So it is shown by the solid dot and at point Q, the direction of uh, magnetic field is into the plane. It is shown by the symbol cross. Now consider a charge Q shown by the black dot. If this dot is moving with some velocity V in upward direction, as soon as this dot enters into the magnetic field, the direction of motion of this particular charge changes. So if the direction of velocity is changing, it means there should be some acceleration. And if there is some kind of acceleration, that means there should be a, some kind of force. Actually, the magnetic field produced due to this particular wire exerts a force on this particular charge. And that force is given as F is equals to Q times V bar cross V bar. The direction of this force is given by the direction of V bar cross V bar. So once again, we can use the right hand rule to find out the direction. If the charge is positive, then the direction of force and the direction of V bar plus V bar will be same. And if the charge is negative, for example, electron, then the direction of force and the direction of V bar plus V bar will be opposite to each other. The magnitude of this magnetic force is given as F is equals to Q V B sin theta where theta is the angle between V and B. Keep this in mind, this particular magnetic force F is perpendicular to the velocity and magnetic field as, as well. So, the force that is the magnetic force is perpendicular to the velocity of a charge. This is the property of a cross product. I hope you all know these basic things. Now, let us consider the motion of an electron in a parallel magnetic field. Now, consider a magnetic field in the right direction. Magnetic field is shown by the letter capital B. Consider an electron shown in the figure. Now, this electron is moving along the x-axis, that is along the straight line path. Now, the velocity is along the x-axis. Magnetic field B is also along the x-axis. So, the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field will be zero. So, if the angle is zero, then by using the mathematics, I can write F is equals to Q V B sin theta. This is the magnitude of the magnetic force. Now, put the value of theta as zero. So, F is equals to Q V B sin zero and uh, sin zero is zero. So, F is equal to zero. That means, when an electron is moving through a parallel magnetic field, the force exerted by the magnetic field on an electron will be zero. So, there will be no change in the velocity of an electron. So, electron will follow the same path as shown in the animation. Now, let us consider the motion of an electron in perpendicular magnetic field. Here, the angle between velocity of an electron 
and the magnetic field is 90 degree. So it is theta will be 90 degree. Now consider a magnetic field as shown in the figure denoted by capital letter B and uh, important thing is this the direction of the magnetic field is into the plane. The cross symbol is used to show the direction of magnetic field. It means the magnetic field is directed into the plane. Consider a charge. Now, if this charge enters into the perpendicular magnetic field, then that particular charge performs the circular motion as shown in the animation. Basically, whenever a charge or an or a electron enters into a perpendicular magnetic field, the charge performs the circular motion. And uh, if the charge is performing the circular motion, that means there should be a, some kind of centripetal force. Because for the circular motion, centripetal force is the necessary force. So centripetal force is given as mv square upon r, where m stands for mass, v stands for speed of the charge, and r stands for radius of the circle. In this case, the centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force. So we can write the magnetic force is equal to centripetal force and magnetic force will be B into E into V is equal to mv square upon r. Here keep this in mind theta equals to 90 degree. So sin 90 becomes 1. That is why the magnetic force is only B into E into velocity that is V, V E V. So from this we can calculate the radius of the circle. So R becomes mv divided by B into E. Here I can write the radius as R proportional to m into v. m into v stands for the momentum. So radius is directly proportional to the momentum. That means if the momentum of a particle changes, then the radius of a circle will also change. Now, if I have the two charges moving with same velocity and having different masses, then the circles will be different. This is very, very important. So basically, the radius of the circle is depends on the mass of the charge. Now, if I have a charge having larger mass than the previous one, as the mass is larger than the previous charge, then the circular motion, that means the circle that this particle will follow, will have a larger radius than the previous case. So, if this particle enters into the magnetic field, perform the circular motion, and you can see that the radius is quite larger than the previous case. So, the meaning of this particular animation is whenever a charge or an electron is moving through a perpendicular magnetic field, then the charge or an electron perform the circular motion. Now, let us discuss the mathematics behind the motion of an electron in a perpendicular magnetic field. Now, when the velocity of an electron is perpendicular to the magnetic field, then theta equals 90. We have already discussed this. So, the force acting on an electron will be E into V into B. Now, we should know the property that whenever the velocity and the force are perpendicular to each other, then the particle performs the circular motion. Always keep this in mind. And whenever the force and velocity is perpendicular to each other, then the work done by the force is also zero. So, there will be no change in the kinetic energy of the particle. Now, circular path requires the centripetal force and in this case, the centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force. So, EVB is equal to mv square upon r. So, r is equal to mv upon eb. We have already discussed this. So, the time period of revolution can be calculated by using the formula T is equal to 2 pi R divided by V. So, put the value of R, we get uh, T 
t is equal to 2 pi by v into mv upon eb. So, after doing some mathematics, capital T, that is period, will be equal to 2 pi m upon eb. From the period, we can calculate the frequency of revolution as uh, f is equal to 1 upon t, that is reciprocal of time period, and that would be eb upon 2 pi m. So, period and frequency are independent of velocity and radius of the orbit. So, the conclusion is this. Whenever an electron is moving through a perpendicular magnetic field, that electron performs the circular motion. And the radius depends on the mass and the velocity as well. Thank you.